All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations, Mr. Lemire. Thank you, everybody. I will ask for nominations for vice chair for 2020 for the Morrison County Board of Commissioners. I'd nominate Mike Wilson. Are there any other nominations? I will ask a third and final time. Are there any other nominations for vice chair for Morrison County Board of Commissioners for 2020? Hearing none, I will close nominations and ask for unanimous ballot for chairman and a motion, or vice chair, excuse me, and a motion for that. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Congratulations, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. And then I will turn it over to our ever capable <coughs> new board chair, Mr. Thank Lemire. You. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Approval of the county board minutes. Could I get a motion and second? I'll make a motion to approve the board minutes. Second. Uh, Commissioner Wilson made the motion. Commissioner Blaine seconded it. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the annual resolutions and appointments. Yeah. All right, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, I will just go through the annual resolutions and the order that they are. First is the travel policy. Um, these, are, these are all resolutions that we kind of tackle every year. It sets the course of business for the year. Um, the travel resolution, travel policy um, identifies that at times for our work, uh, we do travel. Um, most often it's within the state of Minnesota and the business that we do, but it does identify that there are um, a few instances that may occur. Um, they don't often, but sometimes do, and any travel out of state is required by um, the county board. The second resolution is the committee attendance payment for citizens. Those are set the same as 2019, in which it's $75 per meeting for both the Board of Adjustment and Planning Commission and $50 per meeting for all other committees assigned. The third is a public meeting notice. We are required by statute to notice our meetings, um, Minnesota Statute Chapter 13D. This identifies how we do that um, as an organization and when we notice those. The next one is the code of conduct. You as a board lead an organization with many employees, um, 270 plus full-time employees, and then you also represent the county and various committees. And so this resolution was developed to just kind of set the tone for all of us as, a, as followers of you as, and as leaders um, for you on how to operate. And you operate under the following that you will respect the dignity of all individuals, you will respect one another's facts, opinions, and the right to speak, you will refrain from using profane, threatening, or abusive language, you will treat people with respect and dignity in all interactions related to county government, you will allow citizens, staff, or colleagues sufficient opportunity to present their views in a respectful, tolerant, and attentive manner. And again, that sets the tone, and I appreciate um, your willingness to, to address that. We have county board appointments and a list of those appointments that were handed out. Um, those are a guideline um, and they can change throughout the year based upon things that come up. But are there any changes to the list that you see, um, gentlemen, um, from your typical meetings that you attend? I don't know if it matters, but uh, Jeff Jelinski's start date is wrong, but I don't know if that matters. Oh, yep. We can get that fixed. Good catch. Where, where's, where do you see that? Mm. Um, the oh. very end. It has our commissioner terms. Oh. Oh, on that list where it's all of the committees. I see. I was looking at the sheet. Yep. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> I guess when you go back to the committees, Mr. Chair, if I may, um, you go back to the committees. I'm okay to keep all the ones that I'm on now. Mm -hmm. I will keep what I've got. Same here. And I will do the same. I would also call your attention to the planning. Um, there's a second here. Are you on the citizen um, yeah, I'm on and the staff citizen committee thing. one? Jeanette Watland is no longer on our, on our uh, board of adjustments. Jeanette had to resign due to moving out of the county. Okay. 
and we're working on a replacement. Yep. That's now done through an application process, as we know, and, and that's handled through land services. And these appointments, as I said, you know, kind of come and go throughout the year, but we just try to get a best snapshot of what they are at the beginning of the year so everybody mm -hmm. kind of knows where we're at. And so um, we try to keep them up to, to, up to date, excuse me, but appreciate the suggestions and the corrections as it's an extensive list. I'm glad you gave us this because I didn't realize that I am on the Benton County Watershed District because I've never gone to a meeting. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will for now on, but I didn't know that that was me. It's limited interaction. Um, it's still one that kind of reaches um, a little bit into Morrison County, so it makes sense. All right, and then we have the County Board Mileage Reimbursement Policy. And again, um, Minnesota Statute 375.055 allows for reimbursement necessary when you're acting um, on your or in your role as county commissioner, and it identifies those allowable expenses and those that are not. And then the final resolution we have are the, the salaries for the other elected officials within the organization. And as you are well aware, um, they are most similar to staff that work here every day. And so the step and grade philosophy applies to that, um, given their work that they do and the management responsibility that they have day to day in the organization. And so that's what's recommended for that. And so all of those could be considered, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Deb. Could I get a motion from the floor? Mr. Chair, I'll move that uh, we approve these resolutions in their entirety. It's a second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Additions and deletions? Tabitha? Not at this time. All right, could I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Bid for legal printing. All right, Mr. Chair. Again, um, according to statute 331A.12, we are to advertise for bids for legal printing. Um, and so we did that, and the response that we got is from the Morrison County Record, and we only did receive one response, so I will open that now. Oops, and I'll rip it a little bit, but it should be fine. And the response identifies that the bid for 2020 is a line rate of 93 cents per line and a display ad rate of 7.76, or $7.76 per column inch. And Mr. Chair, let me look at what we had last year. It was 91 cents per line and $7.60 per column inch, and so as we know with most things, costs go up, and so um, it looks as if there's a slight increase. It is the only response that we have, so my recommendation would be to accept that. Jim, can I get a vote to uh, approve the bid for legal printing to Morse County Record? So move. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. County Board warrants. Mr. Chair, the Auditor Treasurer isn't here, but I think Steve is in consideration of the warrants is going to come. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Steve. <clears throat> yes, what I need to, this morning is to approve the warrants, to, to get the bills paid. So. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to pay all of our current outstanding bills. Can I get a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? This will be a roll call vote. Mr. Jil uh, Commissioner Jelinski? Aye. Commissioner Blaine? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. And myself, aye. Motion carried. And the next item I have is after further review, I've decided that it's best that we make a motion, even though it was included in it, I felt it was best to separate that motion to transfer the 100000 from the general fund to the building fund. So I'll need a motion to approve that. And Mr. Chair, just a reminder, um, this is a component of the change order that was approved regarding the camera system in the jail. If you recall discussion that we had given the electricians here and given we were opening up the building and the recommendations from the Department of Corrections to update our camera system um, came with a decision that you made to 
um, replace that. And so that camera system is fully installed, and you did so under the, the pretense that the project cost would be funded um, in a split by the project and the bond proceeds that exist, and then also the sheriff's reserve who saved for and um, knowing that this was something that would come up. I believe that the camera system was... Um, uh, it, it was put in when the jail was built, which was the early 90s, and so it certainly was time um, to get updated equipment and get updated, um, uh, well, equipment, I guess, and technology in the jail. Uh, the jail, as you know, is a tremendous liability, um, and so making sure we have good equipment and we can watch um, what we need to watch according to DOC standards is very, very important. So this updated system is, is leaps and bounds better than the old one, and so that is what this transfer is for. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve that transfer. I'll second it. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I think it would be extremely foolish upon this board to not do what the motion states. We've got construction going on right now. DOC is recommending it, and we're all very clear that once DOC recommends something, it's all but law. It's a security thing for one and all, and... I truly say that it would be foolish if we did not act on this at this time versus our construction project being done and then find out that it's not a simple thing that we should get done. It is a must that we get done and then we tear everything open again. And pay twice as much. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you, Mr. And I can say that uh, we, the camera was used and it's uh, quite clear versus the old... Uh, a camera that wasn't so clear to get images of things. So I would be very happy. It's very, very nice. Good. Yeah, it's going to be very useful. So. Mm -hmm. No hidden spots anymore either, hopefully. No, like I don't think so. Or. It seems like it covers. No, well. I think we we worked very hard anyway yeah. to, to make sure we didn't have that. And Steve is right. The ability for us to prove what actually existed in a situation is, is important. And the fact that we can now do that is huge. And so when it comes to liability and potential, um, claims that exist out there. It's a good resource. So I appreciate you supporting that effort when it was done. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Steve. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Public Works Report. Mr. Bukowski, welcome. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Steve. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. It's always nice to see new faces. <laughs> in <this position> Slightly <laughs> different order. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, first action item relates to Bell Prairie Park. As the board's well aware, we have a grant to update our master plan at the park. Those funds come through legacy funds. Um, one of the things we, we don't have <coughs> attached to Bell Prairie Park, even though we had substantial grant money in the acquisition of the park over time, it was bought in pieces, is that we uh, designate that we're not going to sell the park at any point in time. And so what this does, this quick claim deed, um, uh, has the language that they require that we're not going to sell the park and keep it in, public, in the public interest for perpetuity. And so that's what we're trying to accomplish with this. And uh, we're asking that the board would authorize a resolution on allowing the chairman and the administrator to sign that quick claim deed so that uh, we can report to the DNR that we have accomplished that. Gentlemen, could I get a, a vote and a second? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve that resolution. I'll second it. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? You know, Steve, I just got a question, I guess. You know, we're saying that we'll never sell it. What happens down the road if somebody ever wanted to sell it and things if, change? You just got to go through this procedure? If, if there came a time when there was a reason that the board wished to sell that property, <clears throat> we'd have to take it through the commissioner of the Department of Natural Resources to do it. And then if they said yes, then you could do that if for some odd reason that I can't think of. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair, I'll just say that I, th I think this... Uh, you know, states a, a, a significant perspective by the county that uh, when we look at how much uh, time and effort and and some fiscal resources being um, dedicated to this park 
uh, for the people of Morrison County um, that that uh, it shows that there is a plan and there's a plan that uh, that uh, is long term in uh, in uh, providing these this resource out there and that we're not looking at this um, with uh, short term goggles but uh, uh, the people of the county can rest assured that that this resource will be there for for them now and into the future. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair, this is one of the committees I sit on. And while it sounds like it's pretty quick and clean to just say, let's make a motion and take care of this, there's a lot of planning that goes into this. There's a lot of talk. There's a lot of work. There's minds that go into any changes, updates, keeping the park open in the wintertime, keeping people in the park, um, maintaining law enforcement in the park. There's a lot that goes into this. It's not just bing bang and it's done. It's, it's a very positive thing in the county. Good point. The motion for us is to authorize the county board chairman and county minister to sign a quick claim deed for Bell Prairie Park. Those in favor? All right. Opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the second action item um, is, that's going around uh, relates to our equipment acquisition for 2020. In um, our 2020 budget, we had proposed that we would replace a tandem axle truck. Uh, one, typically, is what we can afford. Uh, you can see with the listing of our mileages uh, on the units that we have currently, which are, we have 21 tandem trucks, we have 20 routes, one is a spare. Um, we're on a rotation of approximately 20 years, so we're, we're moving them out at, at a less than what we would want to see, I guess. We're trying to reach a 15-year rotation on our fleet. Um, it's hard to do when, when costs of equipment escalate the way it's been escalating. Um, from time to time, though, as the board is aware, because we've done this before, we have uh, our fleet foreman stays in touch with uh, the dealers, and from time to time, good quality used equipment comes available. And um, it, what we're seeing is that there are going to be some trades in 2020 that would allow us to um, update our fleet uh, better than just a single unit where we could purchase under the amount that we have for the acquisition of about one unit. Probably at the same level, replace three units, three of our older units with that same amount of uh, ex expenditure. And so we have of these 20, 21 units, we have seven of them that, that do not have underbelly blades. They don't have the brine tanks they, because of the age of them. Um, those are tools that really help us in being able to maintain under certain conditions the, the condition and provide better service to those routes because we're able to scrape with the tandems. We don't have to, um, under, under the right weather conditions, bring in motor graders and that type of thing. So what we're asking the board to allow us to do is that we would not purchase a new tandem in 2020. We would convert that over and, and it looks like if the right number of units became available, we could purchase up to three used units for the same value. And our request is that the board would allow us to do that. Gentlemen. Mr. Chair, I'll move that uh, that uh, we allow for this action to take place. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just one quick thing, Mr. Chair, if I may. These underbelly scrapers or whatever the proper terminology, these three units come that way, right? Yes, that's something that we would be looking for, okay. that type of improvement. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. And if I'm not mistaken, Steve, in our discussion, those three trucks with, for like the 90,000 a piece or whatever yes. they are, they come with our colors, they're painted, yeah. our stuff, and everything's on them and equipped with better equipment than we have today. And I really appreciate the fact, I know last year, I think we went out and found a used road grader that we saved a lot of money at out in North Dakota. And I appreciate the fact that you guys are always looking for that to save us money because that's how we can keep our fleet up at, at a lower expense. So thank you. We got, we had a couple of good guys out there that are in it. it, it you have to get the right unit. 
it's not that, uh, you know, just because it's got a, it's a, a newer year that you're going to want to acquire that. It's, it's got to have some good uh, maintenance history. It's got to be in, in decent condition. And uh, th their inspection and review of this is very intense. So I, I really feel confident that the units that we will be getting are going to be good units that we can keep in our fleet for, for a number of years. Um, they're, they're typically 2010s. And so we're getting, we're moving out units that are from 2000 and moving up to 2010s, cutting the mileage in half and uh, for about a third of the cost. Real good, thank you. Commissioner Blaine. Uh, oh. no, nothing further, Mr. Chair. I just want to piggyback on what Mike said. We appreciate you uh, looking outside the box, per se, and, and uh, you're getting three for the price of one. You can't get any better than that, and we appreciate that. I think it'll be a good deal for the county. Better service. And yep. Any further discussion, gentlemen? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you, Steve. Steve. Have a Steve. great day. Administrator's report, Deb? Mr. Chair, I just have, uh, I don't have action items, um, but I do have a quick update that we did um, set a meeting, if it works in your calendars, for the first, or it'd be the January 29th, Wednesday, January 29th, um, in the evening at 6.30 with the City Council. We've been wanting to get a meeting, a joint meeting scheduled with them for quite some time. When we had worked on it the other year, they were getting into place there some some turnover after an election and such and so we're able to schedule that it would be here works in, for me in this um for me. building what time? So 6 30 p.m so tabitha will send an invitation out yep here you're gonna send an invitation yep so i'm we'll good send with it. the invitation and we'll get it ready to go and we will see then and a number of different agenda items john and i were talking um about what we can put on the list and so just to get everybody on the same page about different issues that we work on together so i appreciate that because i think we had a discussion a year or two ago about mm -hmm. meeting with the city once a year and just so we know what their plans are coming up they know what ours are coming up and talk about stuff that might affect both of us that we have some insight on what each other's doing absolutely shared constituency so. is a big deal and so we want to make sure we're on the same page with things mm -hmm. and we'll get an agenda out to you prior to the meeting too very good. Is that all you got, Deb? It is all I have. If you notice, well, I, I lied. Um, <coughs> upstairs, they're open for business in our um, phase three of the project. Uh, so folks are moving <coughs> over as we speak. Uh, we have the front desk there. Um, they're ready to go. Veteran Services has moved over, Public Health front desk, Social Services front desk, and then the rest of the staff is, is slowly trickling in and getting into their their permanent homes. And so just the, the other day, I noticed I was up there um, taking a look at where things were at. And we had um, a young family who was being served by veteran services and they needed um, interaction at the social services counter and were able to just step three or four steps down um, instead of haul their kids in the baby carrier across the complex to be able to do their business. And to me, that's what most of this, um, well, what a large component of this was about is to really serve folks better and we could do better and, and getting a building up to date with the, the mechanical systems that we needed to do and all of the, the situations that come with the, at, or, um, at newest a 30 year old building, but really concentrating on serving people that come into these doors um, in a way that meets their needs is important. And so I can only imagine that that will continue to grow. Um, and so again, thank you for the support in that and thanks to staff for their patience as we work through this and we have a couple more phases to go and then, and then we'll be done. So I wanted to let you know that that's happening and it's, it's going well. well thank you, Deb. Yep. Next before us is our community reports and upcoming schedules. Commissioner Jelinski, would you like to start out? Sure, when do we go from? January 12th through January 25th. 25th? Yes. It's always good to start with him because then the rest of us are pretty well filled in. <laughs> should do that all the time, but. <laughs> yeah. Commissioner Winter would have been on the, on the deck, deck if you would have been here. There we go. Uh, on the 14th of January at 8.30 in the morning, we've got a planning meeting here at the Government Center. On the 15th at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I've got a Hands of Hope meeting here at the boardroom. 
on the 16th at 10 o'clock in the morning, I've got a Central Minnesota Emergency Services Board owners and operators meeting in Alexandria. I would normally have Egg Society that evening. However, Egg Society is going to have a holiday Christmas gathering on the 25th of January. And they're going to incorporate their monthly meeting at that time. On the 17th at 10 o'clock in the morning, I have a State Emergency Communications Board meeting of sorts with Director Walbert from the Emergency Communications Network and the Assistant Commissioner of Public Safety here in administration. On the 21st of this month, we have County Board at 9 o'clock in the morning. On the 22nd at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I have a community needs assessment meeting at St. Gabriel's Hospital in the Ripley room. On the 23rd of this month, I have a State Emergency Communications Board meeting, and I believe that that is at the DOC in St. Paul. And as I said earlier on the 25th of this month is when the Egg Society is going to be having their holiday Christmas party and meeting at 6 o'clock, and I believe that that is going to be at Herbie's Bar in Flensburg. And for the record, at 10 o'clock that same day, Sprout is having a, their doors are open. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Jelinski. Commissioner Blaine? Um, I have two things to add. Uh, uh, on Tuesday the 14th at 8 p.m., I will meet with uh, Amy Kowalczyk, and we will meet with Parker Township, and that will be the last of the township Done meetings. That. Um, um, that is Tuesday the 14th at 8 p.m. Um, other than that, uh, Mr. Chair, on, on uh, Thursday, January 23rd at 6 p.m., I have Region 5 uh, um, at NGPA in Staples. Is Parker Township at their town hall? Is that where you're? I, I, yeah, I believe I've, I am under uh, I am under that uh, assumption because that's what was scheduled. So, thank you, Tabitha. The calendar's right. Right. Thank you, Commissioner Blank. Commissioner Wilson. On the 16th, I've got Airport Commission at noon, and I got RTCC board mem board meeting at 10 o'clock up in Staples. On the 21st, I've got Community Development at 12:15, <coughs> and the 24th, I've got Mississippi Headwaters up in Walker. At nine. Yep. What was the on the 16th? You had at 10 o'clock. At RTCC, that's Rural Transportation Committee. That's up in Staples at 10 o'clock. And I, the only thing I have to add is on the 13th, get my Yellow Ribbon Committee, 530. Where is that? Evan Pieper. Okay. Commissioner Wincher? On the 15th, did anybody bring up our Mississippi, our event? At 5.30 at the Initiative Foundation is on. What day is that? It's on the 15th of Wednesday. It's called Our Mississippi, Our Future event. Are you sure that's not on the 16th? The only reason, I've got, I've got Community Form Mississippi on the 16th. And, and I, I, could the, be, I could be and wrong, too. I could too. be wrong, too. But did anybody bring that up so maybe no, we, we did can not. check into that? Did not. And then everything else, and you're going through the 24th. Great River Regional Library on the Tuesday, the 21st at 5 p.m. And at 5.30, I have uh, TCC on the 23rd. Thank you, I'll Commissioner do, Winter. Yep. Randy, I'll figure out those dates. Uh, okay. yeah. All right, gentlemen, being no further business, could I get a motion to for adjournment? Oh, wait, sorry. There's one committee um, question that I have. This will go around. It's the policy committee um, verification for 2024 AMC. And so um, if you just want to make sure you identify which policy committee you're officially a member of and we need to send this back. I'm sorry, oh, I meant right. to do that. But there's the Environment and Natural Resource Committee, General Government, Health and Human Services, Public Safety, Transportation and Infrastructure. And then we'll list you as commissioners and typically myself as a delegate to be able to vote 
in 2020 for AMC and those issues. And so um, typically, if you want to make changes, that's fine. But otherwise, um, we'll just go off of what was identified in the past. Um, but have you guys make sure you legibly sign up for that. Thank you. Very Sorry. Good. Any other business? Could I get a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion and second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.